Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some alien romance recommendations for you. I've actually made quite a few alien romance rec videos if you did not know. <laughs> So um, I'll link those down below if you want even more recommendations from me. So let's get into some amazing alien romances. First, I have a whole series. This is the Horde Kings of Drakkar series by Zoe Draven. Um, I do own the first two books in the series, Captive of the Horde King and Claimed by the Horde King. These two are the first two. And this series is like one of my new favorite alien romance series of all time. Like it's so good. I can't really talk about them like all in depth because there's six books and I don't want to be sitting here all day for this whole video talking about this one series. So um, I'll be quick. I'll summarize the series. So each book in the series is about one of these Drakari horde kings um, finding their mates. The Drakari are aliens that live on the planet Drakkar. They are very barbarian-esque. They really remind me of the Dothraki from Game of Thrones, but they're aliens. They are humanoid. They have a tail though and like gold skin. Um, so they're not very monster-ish. So if you're not really into monster books, like aliens that lead more towards the monster look inside. So like pick these books up. Like they read very fantasy, read very fantasy. So you have these very burly alpha alien men finding their way. Um, each book is fairly different. Book one is like a capture captive romance at first. Book two, A Claim for the Horde King, is a um, romance about like a heroine who does a crime towards the the planet and the hero spares her and kidnaps her and takes him back to takes her back to his horde. Book three, Madness of the Horde King is like about a human woman who has like magical powers and the hero has to help her with like a quest, but he's like a cursed. Horde King. Book number four, which is probably my favorite one, is A Second Chance Romance. Oh, so good. Book number five is um, like a captor captive on both sides at some point. So the heroine becomes like kidnaps him and then he kidnaps her right back. And then uh, book six is like the last one and it's Fated Mates. Like it's really good. Um, So there's like an overarching plot line throughout the entire series when it comes to like the villain and the like the conflict in the overarching series. So I do recommend reading them in order, but man, <laughs> they are so good. I love them so much. Like I wish there were more and I can't wait to read more Zoe Draven books. These are the only books that I've read by Zoe Draven so far. Next I have Heart's Prisoner by um, Olivia Riley. For this one, I really recommend listening to the audiobook right now. It's on Audible Plus. So if you have Audible, you can listen to this book for free um, because I tried reading this book like a year ago as a Kindle and it's in third person and third person I'm normally fine with. For some reason, this book, like the third person just was not vibing well with me, but the audiobook like completely changed the game. I was totally sucked into this book right from the get-go when I picked up the audio. The heroine of this book, she is a scientist and she has been tasked to get to know this like very dangerous alien creature that has been like not enslaved, like become a prisoner, you know? Like she's been tasked to like get to know him, befriend him and study him basically. And throughout this, throughout their like interactions and her, her studying him and everything, like she ends up falling in love with this very dangerous alien. And that's only a part, a small portion of the book. I can't even talk about the rest of it because it could be a total spoiler. But yeah, Zerus, the alien in here, like he at first is so like mean to our heroine. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's just gruff and grumpy and mean and he has a mission. He has a mission and he is going to stick to it. But then like Lana comes in his life and his plans are completely thrown off the wall and he does not know what to do. But it's very interesting like their dynamic because he's in this cell the entire time and she's like introducing him to human culture and things that she likes and learning about him and what he likes to do and different foods and stuff. There's even one one instance where like she's introducing him to different like human foods and like I think she like gives him a mango and he he loves it. He's like, give me more of it. And she's like, here, so try some chocolate. And like, he's like, it tastes okay. And then immediately barfs it up. He's like, I don't think I like chocolate. Like, <laughs> I don't know why this scene is like in my brain. I, I found it so funny. Um, But there's even more to that romance than just that one portion. That's just a small portion of this book. I can't even talk about the rest because it could be a spoiler, but um, man, I do really recommend this audiobook. Next, I have a Ruby Dixon book. What's an alien romance rec video without a Ruby Dixon? I have When She's Fearless. This is a part of the Risdiverse series, if you don't know about the Risdiverse series. Um, it's basically books that take place on this human refugee planet called Risda 3, where a lot of human women who have been abducted from Earth, they find solace, are able to like leave, live fulfilling lives on this planet after escaping like alien slavery. 
Um, so Chelsea in here is a human woman who now is living on Rista 3 and owns a farm on Rista 3. And she definitely lives a more fearless life after escaping slavery. So she ends up finding this alien on her property one day. He like lost something in a river, his like ID badge or something in the river and he's trying to find it and the river just like happens to be on her property at some point. And when she finds this alien, she can't help but like invite him back home. She's like, you're very attractive, uh, let's go. <laughs> Harusek is our hero in here and he is totally smitten with Chelsea like right from the get go. Um, but he doesn't really know how to tell this woman like he wants more than just one night and more than just a fling, like he wants more. And he doesn't really know how to verbalize that. He's like very awkward in that sense. So um, I just really enjoyed, really enjoyed this read. Another Ruby Dixon one is Worst Guy. Um, this is a part of the Villains in Love series. So you have our heroine here who is, I believe a clone of a evil, like bloodthirsty, very notorious um, alien gladiator. And he's been taken to the planet Rizda 3. So like I said, I think in my Ruby Dixon deep dive video, like a lot of Ruby series like interweave. And so this is not a part of the Rizdaverse series, but it takes place on the Rizda 3 planet. He's been taken to Rizda 3 in hopes of like re-re- acclimating, there we go, acclimating him with um, other creatures. People aren't really treating him the best. Uh, B in here, when she was on Earth, she was a social worker and like she feels like that's her life passion and calling. And so um, when she sees the opportunity to help this Cruelden clone out, she takes it by the horns. And so she's gonna get to know him and kind of help him and reintroduce him to society. So she's gonna try everything in her power to help him feel safe and welcome. And uh, this big burly, alien just becomes a total softie for B. Like, oh, it's so cute. Like, I think it's so interesting how these clones of this evil alien man are just like the sweetest beans ever. I, I love Ruby. I love Ruby for doing that. <laughs> she writes like the sweetest alien heroes ever. But like, don't let that fool you just because, but don't let that fool you just because these uh, men are sweet in one department um, doesn't mean they're not so sweet in another department, mm, okay? Mm, okay. Next, I have Claiming His Mate by A.G. Wild. This is the first book in her most recent series. Um, each book in the series is about a human woman who is physically disabled, fighting their fate and mate with one of these Atari aliens. So this book is about Marion and she thinks that she won this all expenses paid space cruise. And so she's so excited. She goes on the cruise and everything. And when she's on the space cruise, she's like noticing things. She's like, um, all the other people on this space cruise are women. And all of them also have physical disabilities. Marion was born with um, out like this part of her arm. So elbow down, she does not have an arm. And so she's like, this is kind of suspicious. Um, little do they know though, uh, their government is horrible. Well, they already knew their government was horrible, but even worse than they thought. The human government on earth made an alliance with the Atari aliens. And um, as like a peace offering to these aliens who are very low on women, um, they decided to like give them some of theirs. They don't want these disabled women on their planet anymore. So they go and give them to aliens. <sighs> but the Atari though don't know that the women are not there like willingly, you know, like they have no clue. Anyway, before the Atari can get to the spaceship that these women are on, the spaceship gets overtaken by some horrible, mean, evil aliens who end up massacring the entire spaceship except for four women who get taken by them. When the Atari finally settle on the spaceship that the human women are supposed to be on, they are like devastated by all these dead bodies, obviously. A.G. Wilde's books get very dark at points, but like fluffy in others. So just be aware of that before going into any of her alien romances. Like there's gonna have these dark elements to it, but it's gonna also have those fluffy elements as well. So here, here, Aknar, he looks at the like, security camera to witness what happened. He ends up seeing that four women were taken and he is utterly intrigued by one of them and knows that that is his fate to make like right from the get go. He goes, I have to go find her. So he goes on a journey to track down the woman he knows is his fate to make. This one, remember, does get dark at points. So please be aware of that. But I really like how A.G. Wild is like really writing some good alien romances for characters who are disabled. Like I love that. Um, I'm currently reading book two in the series right now. Um, as I'm filming this and our heroine in that one is a wheelchair user. And so yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this series. Ooh, this one, I could talk about this book all day long. Take it to Braxia by Elizabeth Stevens. So I'm gonna try and keep this one as short and sweet as I possibly can because like I could talk about this book forever. Um, I love this alien romance. It reads very fantasy-esque. It does get dark at times, so just please be aware of that. Our heroine here lives on this moon full of human women. 
Um, she's actually a hybrid. She's part human and part certain alien. Like she has red skin and a tail, but she has also um, like human features to her as well. The whole moon is basically slaves. They're all slaves. Um, and the moon that they're on is actually orbiting this planet, I think called Varaxia. And the king of it like doesn't know what is going on. He like notices that some products are being sent to this moon. He goes, why? Like nothing's on that moon. So he goes to the moon to figure out what's going on. And he is pissed that all these women are here and have been used and abused for years. Um, but right when he also sets foot on the planet, he's able to sense his mate and he tracks her down and he realizes it's, it's our heroine. And after that point, all bets are off and he is furious that she's endured like so much travesty on this moon. That's all I'm gonna leave you with. I don't wanna say anything else because I don't want it to be a spoiler. And this book is amazing to just go in as blind as possible. There's a lot, a lot going on in this one. There are some trigger warnings in here. So um, SA, not to the main character, attempted SA to the main character. Death, gore, blood, slavery, starvation, and discussion of women being objects. So just like be aware of those before you dive into this one. I next have to talk about my favorite book, a part of the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series by Honey Phillips. If you want like a fluffy, sweet romance, like alien romance series, like you gotta read these books. Like you have to. So my favorite book in the series out of the seven of them is book six, which is Grantor. Grantor is a very reclusive um, alien. Um, this whole series is about seven alien brothers in arms who um, bought this ranch on this snow planet. And a lot of these books are about uh, these aliens kidnapping human women from a neighboring village because that's how they think they'll find wives. <laughs> anyway, so Benjar, one of Frantor's brothers is like, Frantor needs a wife. Um, I'm going to kidnap one for him and leave her at his doorstep. So that's what happens. In the middle of the snowstorm, this woman gets left in Frantor's home. But Frantor is a very big recluse um, because he's like a war veteran. He um, has some prosthetics and some scars from battle and he is very self-conscious about his appearance and he keeps to himself because he doesn't want to scare anyone, especially a human woman. Florian here is the human woman that was kidnapped <laughs> by Benjar and she was the town like chef and cook and owned a restaurant in town. She's super passionate about cooking. So like, I love that part in this book. So Frantor realizes what's going on and he's trying with all of his might to make sure that Flory never sees his face because he does not want to scare her. Like it would devastate him if this passionate, beautiful woman would be scared of him. So he tries everything in his power to make sure she does not physically see him. Like he stands in the shadows. He's staying downstairs while she stays upstairs in his place. Um, but they're stuck together during the snowstorm. Like the snowstorm is very dangerous. Like you cannot go out in it, you will die. But as they spend more time together, like Flory and Frantor end up falling in love with each other. Um, and Flory just wants Frantor to show her every part of him. Like she does not care at all what he looks like. Like I'm a huge sucker for romances where characters fall in love with each other without knowing what they look like. And ah, uh, this book totally filled my soul for that. I really enjoyed this one. Out of all the books in the series, this one is definitely my favorite. Another Honey Phillips book is Mama and the Alien Warrior. Um, this is the first book in her Treasured by Alien series. I didn't love this one as much as the other one I talked about. Um, but it was still a great read nonetheless. Abby is our heroine in here and she has a daughter named Lucy. And Abby runs this home, um, this maternity home for women who have been kicked out of their home or have nowhere else to go and they're young mothers or expecting mothers. They end up getting kidnapped by some evil aliens at the beginning of this book from Earth. And they are like shocked because they didn't know aliens existed obviously. And like, <laughs> they're not very happy with the situation. Uh, but then they get saved by our hero, Prebeck's people. And um, Prebeck and Abby just have this instant connection. But like, he's very disappointed at the same time because like he promised Abby that he would take her and her girls home. But he's like devastated because he's like, I'm falling in love with this woman. Like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> um, so this one is super sweet. I really enjoyed it. I loved how welcoming Herbeck was to Abby's children. Um, Abby also really takes in one of these alien babies that is like left alone. And so like he becomes full on dad mode, <laughs> full on dad mode for Lucy and this alien baby. Like, hmm. I, I love, I love that. I love that part of this book. Next I have Wed to the Alien Warlord by January Bell. This is the first book in the Accidental Alien Bride series. Okay, so this series, I've only read this first book right now um, as I'm filming this, um, but I can't wait to read more in the series. This book is filled with the language barrier trope and I think other books in the series do as well. But our heroine in here, she's a part of a all women space crew 
And they're so excited because their government finally sent them on like a very important mission to sign this peace treaty with um, these aliens on a specific planet. They go to the planet and the aliens have started hosting this like meal of sorts. And they're like, okay, I guess we have to like go to this meal and participate in this like ceremony of sorts to like sign this agreement whatsoever. When they get to the planet, these aliens have like put together this like, um, like feast of sorts, a celebratory dinner. And they're like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess we'll like be very respective of their culture and like, like be with them during this uh, meal. What they don't know though, <laughs> is that their human government doesn't believe in them. Um, they've sold them out basically to these aliens and are like, here, here's some wives. And they don't know that they're getting married during this dinner and like ceremony. And so like after the ceremony's done, like the group gets ambushed and like, like alien guys end up taking human women to like go protect them. So our heroine here is like the the leader of all these women. She's with an alien warlord and she's like, what is going on? They don't speak the same language. Her language chip finally works um, whenever they like run away into the woods. And he's like, here wife, let me help you out. Let me like, bandage you up and stuff if she gets, she got hurt or something. And she's like, what? I am not your wife? What are you talking about? And he's like, oh yeah, we just got married. Like all of y'all human women got married to us. She's like, what? <laughs> so um, there's like, <laughs> like a very entertaining, funny parts of this book, um, but it does have its dark elements as well. And the last book that I have to mention is an Amanda Milo alien romance. I love Amanda Milo alien romances. And um, the first one that I read by her, Stolen by an Alien is the first book in this Stolen by an Alien series. I've read the entire series now, I think, except for the last one. But I can't believe this book has not been in a rec video yet. It's not my favorite alien romance, um, but it definitely is really good at setting up this whole entire series that is very entertaining. And she is a human woman who is kidnapped from Earth. She's like put into slavery or put into auction or something. And Aruk is a part of an alien species um that like you could see on the cover like he's covered in like spikes and stuff anyway um his alien species are very well known for being protectors and bodyguards to the certain alien species that look like humans but they have wings and they consider them to be princesses and so he sees this woman like getting basically molested by some aliens and he's like oh my gosh they're like molesting a, a princess of my land like that cannot happen and so he saves her and this is about him bringing her back to her people on her planet. He doesn't know that she's not from those people. Like has no clue because they don't speak the same language. They have no idea what the other one is saying, but he's going to protect her at whatever cost. And despite them not knowing what the other person is saying, but despite the language barrier, they end up falling in love with each other while he is protecting her and bringing her back to his planet. This was a very entertaining read. It very much sets up other books in the series. And I really do think this series is just so fun. I do recommend also listening to the audiobooks. Like, they're really good. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some alien romance recommendations for you. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the, like, alien space saucer emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all. Thank you.